X-ray procedure for fluoride treatment. The following materials or armor material are set up before the fluoride procedure is begun. Fluoride, fluoride trays, saliva ejector, sterile cassette, cup of water, cotton rolls, gauze square, and the patient drink. The patient is seated in a semi-upright position. The procedures are explained to the patient at their level of understanding. The patient's clothes are protected with a plastic covering. The light is directed into the working area. Select the best size trays for the patient's mouth. Try it to verify. At the last appointment, we had talked about that following the motor polish today, we would be doing a fluoride treatment, and that is to replenish the fluoride on the surface of the enamel that has been removed through polishing. That fluoride that we'll be using today is a neutral sodium fluoride because you have porcelain work in your mouth and that will keep it from being etched by using the neutral sodium fluoride. It will be a foam that goes into the trays. The trays will be placed in your mouth after your teeth are dry and remain on the teeth for four minutes, after which we'll remove them, remove the excess fluoride and uh, give you instructions. And that will be the end of our procedures today. Fill, fill the tray the to tray. the top if using a foam fluoride and fill one third of the tray if using a gel fluoride. By digital retraction is used to prevent contact of mucosa with teeth before drying. The saliva ejector is positioned in the mouth. Dry tooth surfaces with compressed air. The sequence of drying to most effectively remove saliva is as follows. The occlusal surfaces, the facial surfaces, the lingual and proximal surfaces in a zigzag motion. Double arch application. The maxillary arch is dried first and then the mandibular arch. For the right-handed clinician, the left hand maintains bi-digital retraction during the insertion of the trays. The left-handed clinician, the right hand maintains bi-digital retraction during insertion of the trays. The mandibular tray is inserted first. If necessary, redry buccal surfaces of maxillary teeth with air if contamination occurred prior to seating the maxillary tray. Squeeze trays to force fluoride in approximately. Reinsert the saliva ejector.
Squeeze trays to force fluoride in approximately. Reinsert the saliva ejector. Place cotton rolls in each premolar region along the occlusal plane to balance the trays. Keep the tray seated and give space for the saliva ejector. The patient is requested to close gently on the cotton rolls. Follow the manufacturer's directions. Sodium fluoride is recommended for porcelain, composites, resins, sealants, and all tooth colored restorations. Fluoride varnish is recommended for patients with high caries risk and painted onto the tooth surface. Awareness of the patient's comfort is maintained throughout the fluoride procedure. Stay with your patient. Removal of fluoride trays. The saliva ejector, cotton rolls, and trays are removed following the timed application. Excess fluoride is removed from the patient's mouth with gauze and the saliva ejector. Follow-up instructions are given to the patient. Avoid eating, drinking, rinsing, or smoking for at least 30 minutes to allow extended contact of fluoride with teeth for additional benefit. Give your client the exact time. Once the excess fluoride and fluoride trays are removed, the tissues are examined with the light and mirror after treatment and before the patient is dismissed. When the client no longer needs to evacuate any excess fluoride from the oral cavity, the vacuum hoses are flushed with water due to the acidity of the fluoride. A reappoint check is completed by an instructor or DDS before the patient is dismissed.